That's right. That's right. You get out of here. <laughs> yes. You saw it here, an exclusive. David DTV single-handedly wrestling the biggest alligator in the world. Or at least it seemed that way to me. It was huge. It had to be at least 10 feet. It took every ounce of energy and courage that I had, but I did it. You saw it here, an exclusive daredevil stunt right here on David DTV. Back to you. Did you see that? <laughs> I had him in the headlock. Boom! Oh, you got to make me double copies for my parents, my mom and my dad. They're not going to believe that. Oh, okay. There we go. No, oh, I didn't get it. What? What do you mean you didn't get it? I mean... Uh, no, no, I didn't say, I meant, uh, you don't get it. Uh, uh you, you don't want to show your folks such a heinous disregard for the life that they brought into this world now, do you? I mean, think about it. They'd be so upset if they saw you risking your life like but that. I, it would, uh, Come on. Okay. Maybe you're right. Yes, I am right. You'll see. I'll just destroy the evidence and it'll be over with, okay? Whew, that was close. Now that I've got this figured out, let's get back to doing our show. I want to find a manatee. You notice right now I'm pretty dry. Well, that's going to change in just a couple of minutes on David D. TV. We're going to try to find some manatees. Scuba time. It's scuba time. Scuba dooba doo. Where are you? Are we ready? We're ready. We're looking for manatees, in search of manatees. I got some friends, they're called manatees, they invited me out to their pool. It's about two and a half miles out. We're gonna go swimming, see what we can find. Come on. Out here on the Crystal River, you're going to find a bunch of sanctuaries, like this one right over here. That's Banana Island, protecting the elusive banana. No, just kidding. There's a lot of endangered birds out there, like the blue heron. You'll find some cranes. I see some seagulls and pelicans over there. A man is not allowed on that island. It's protected. And from here on in, those birds are going to have their own place to hang out. Manatee zone, idle speed. Now, I see a big red circle there. I'm assuming that means slow it down, huh? That's right. They have a 30-mile-an-hour speed zone during a uh off manatee season, but during the manatee season it slows down to idle speed, so that's just a warning sign, basically. They're an endangered species, are they not? Yes, they are, yeah. We don't have very many of them left, and we want to protect the ones we got. It's a good idea, so keep it slow. Whenever you see that sign out there, idle speed, slow it down. Out here on David DTV, safety is the number one precaution. You always have to keep your head up. You always have to know what you're... Whoa! Sorry. Know what you're doing here. I'll get back with you in a second. Almost lost my head there. I want to find a manatee. What exactly are we doing here? Right now we're going to anchor the boat. And it's a good idea when you're anchoring your boat is to let your anchor in nice and slow so you don't scare the manatees. Too many times people jump out here and just toss them overboard. Just chuck it out there. Just chuck it out, yeah. Who knows what it's going to hit or how much noise it's going to make. So. Not to mention some swimmers that might be, you know, in a crowded area. That's quite true, yeah. And the, and the anchor just goes down there, buckles into the, uh, the sand or coral or whatever you have down there and holds the boat still, I guess, right? Ideally, we anchor in the sand so we don't hook onto anything else, no vegetation or anything like that. So, so you don't, you're not disturbing the environment? Disturbing the environment, right. Good deal. All right, is it time to uh, get in there? This is too beautiful. It's getting that time, Dave. I think we're just going to have to rough it and go ahead and put our gear on and go diving. Bro. Right, we've got to rough it. Scuba time. <laughs> What we're doing today is called a one-day scuba adventure. Uh, what it's designed to do is give uh, novice people that are snorkelers or just swimmers uh, a chance to try scuba diving out. Diving is a safe sport. Uh, it's uh, not really hard to do as long as you're physically fit uh, in decent shape. Old and young can do it. It's not a big problem. Uh, there are a few things I need to tell you about. Okay, and Most of it comes from the weight of the water. Since we're going under the surface and dropping down, we have to deal with a few things that happen to our bodies. Uh, Mostly since we, our bodies are made of liquids and solids, uh, the pressure of the water really doesn't affect, affect our bodies much. But what it does affect are the air spaces in our body. We have four different air spaces. Uh, your ears, your sinus cavities, and your lungs are three of the primary air spaces. But when you add the mask to your body, that becomes your fourth air space. 
Uh, one of the techniques to make your ears feel okay while you're diving is where we pinch and blow. You might have seen pictures of divers pinch and blow like they're blowing like that. It forces air up into your ears and that equalizes that air space. Okay? Some other things that can help you equalize would be wiggling your jaw like that, swallowing. Okay? That also helps. Those are all things that can help to do it. That also forces air up into your sinus cavity so that equalizes your ears and your sinuses. So after you do that, that should take care of your ears and sinuses. Okay? Your mask is an airspace. If you were to dive down five or six feet, you may feel a little tugging on that also. To avoid any squeeze on your mask, all we ask you to do is just blow a little bit of air through your nose every few feet as you descend down. Okay? And that will equalize your mask. Your lungs are real easy to take care of. All you have to do is breathe in and out. Just like that. And that will equalize your lungs. Okay? So those are the four airspaces we have to equalize. Primarily, we have to do that early and often. From the time you leave the surface, you want to equalize every couple feet as you descend down, because the deeper you go, the more pressure applies to this depth. So that you get down to depth, the more pressure is being put on your body, and these air spaces are being compressed. We'll also cover some hand signals that we're going to use underwater. Since we're going down below the surface, we can't talk anymore, which is kind of a kind of the nice thing about it. So we'll have to do a few hand signals. They're mostly common sense. This is a OK, and that's a question. When I ask you that, give that OK back to me. Uh, if I want you to stop, just stop it that way. If something's wrong or you feel uncomfortable, this is something's wrong. If I want you to go up, directions are always thumbs, up or down. Nowadays, we get kind of confused. When I ask somebody if they're OK, they always go, yeah, man. <laughs> you go so, up. <laughs> yeah, so you go up. So thumbs or direction, don't forget that. Um, if for some reason you're uh, feeling a little uncomfortable breathing or you find that you might be getting low on air, just, this means I'm out of air. Just a big slash across the throat. I'm going to be watching your gauge from time to time so you won't ever get to that point. Um, but if you do feel a little uncomfortable about it, big slash across your throat and I'll know what to do. If you get feeling like you're having a little bit of ear problem as we descend down, just point at your ear. I'll know how to take care of that. What we'll do is we'll stop. We'll come up a few feet. Usually the pressure kind of goes off of your air spaces. Then you could try to equalize again. Then we'll drop down and try to continue to dive. Is it me? Is it my color? Do you mind? Now, why do they fit so tight, do you know? What they do is they, uh, they allow the water to get in, but if you had it too loose, too much water would get in and always keep you cold. So they fit nice and snug. You get a little layer of water between you and the suit. And that's why you warm up and it keeps your body warm. Point. I think it fits, it fits perfect. I like this. <laughs> this is the tank that we use. This can pulls all the air. This is the regulator that breaks the air down. Then of course it goes to the primary regulators and this is the one you breathe off of. Okay. When you put this in your mouth, what you want to do is you want to make a good seal on it. Okay, so put it in your mouth with the exhaust key in the down position, just like that. Okay. So when you when you first put it in, you want to exhale before you inhale. That will get rid of any water that's in the regulator. Just blow out. Just blow out, and then you can inhale. Luke, I am your father. This jacket is called a BCD. Okay, a buoyancy compensator device. And that's a, new, that's a safety piece of equipment that we use, and we kind of use it like a life jacket would be. We put air into it, and it allows us to float on the surface. So we just add, add air to it. You just hit that button? Just push that little button right there, and that allows you to put air in the jacket so you can float on the surface. Kind of like pumps? Just like you a up. Pump. Cool. All right. There well, you guys are high tech here. You don't mess around. Then you have the little red button on top, so if you want to let air out and descend down, you just let that out. <laughs> that out. The air goes out, and you start to descend. All right. All right. Put the mask on. Time to get wet. Let's do it. I am not from your world. OK. OK, now we want to go ahead and get ready to get in. I got a dive master in the water with the camera. If you just walk right up the steps, sit down on the top rung, okay. get your fins on you. This is probably one of the most dangerous parts about scuba diving, huh? That's right. The getting on and the getting off the boat is the trickiest part, so we want to be careful when we come up the ladder. And talking without sounding like Urkel is probably a big challenge. Okay, I hope you're ready to get wet, because when we come back, we're going in. Pardon me. This is going to be great. With our underwater cam, we'll be able to swim in the water right alongside David. David DTV, a Smedley production. We'll be back after these messages.
What? We're on? <laughs> and now back to David DTV. Okay, is everybody ready? With our underwater cam, we're actually going to go down and hang out underwater. It's going to be like visiting a whole new world. What I want you to do now is put this regulator in your mouth. Uh-huh. Remember to exhale before you inhale. And you're just going to walk right down in here. I'm going to have a little air in your jacket, so you should float just fine. Let's go underwater for a look. I know you. I know you. Ooh, what does that mean? We are now approaching a mysterious undersea archway leading to... Well, more water appears. The mysterious undersea archway to warm water. Coming through. Coming through. Another way, please. Coming through. Excuse me. What? A drive through? All right. No, no! Okay, Dave, right, I think you can take that mask off about now. Oh, you? yeah, you're right. Oh, I'm so excited. That was the first time I've ever done that. I was a little bit nervous at first because you really don't want to take in that first breath when you're underwater. It's so unnatural feeling, but once you're under there, it was just so cool. Yeah, you seemed to do real well after you got a few minutes underwater and kind of relaxed and got down a little bit, so. I couldn't believe how still everything was. It kind of felt like I was in somebody else's world, you know? Yeah, we are. We're just kind of slipping in, taking a little look around, and then we have to come back here and return to the surface. But uh, it is a different world, basically. I mean, right now the wind's blowing. You can hear birds chirping every once in a while. A car or a, a plane will go overhead. But under there, it is so quiet. All you can hear is your own breathing. And occasionally be going, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? But it was just so unbelievable under there. If you ever get a chance, even if you just snorkel, just to get a look and get a feel for what it's like. I appreciate it. Blue Adventure, Captain Richard, right. showing us what it's like to go underwater. Thanks. Hi, buddy. Woo! Now, how do we get out of these things? That's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> when David DTV returns, we're going to take you to the home of otters, sharks, stingrays, fish, birds, and hundreds of other cool animals at the Florida Aquarium. Don't move. Smedley. Smedley, that's your cue. Go into a commercial. It's a lead-in. Go. Smedley? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There? I'm here. Uh, all this talk about water has been making me thirsty, so I got a big, tall, cold glass of water. No, wait, 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 wait. You didn't get my memo? There's no food or drinks allowed in the control room, man. Come on. You know that. Oh, come on. Why? I mean, it's... Whoops. We're coming back with more David DTV right after these messages.
We're back. More David D. TV. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Smedley. You think you would have learned your lesson after spilling an entire beverage on the console there, all the equipment? I mean, come on. Well, that's not going to happen again. I came up with a brilliant idea. I glued the cup to the console. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I think I got to go. <laughs> Bye. No, 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 Smedley, Smedley. Great. Now, if I could only glue him down to keep him from going places. He drank too much water. That's just great. I'm out here. He's in the little boy's room, and I'm out. You know, speaking of water, this place, Florida Aquarium, holds over a million gallons of water. Let's go check it out. We don't need him. Come on. What's up, David DTV, the Florida Aquarium. This is Jamie, my friend here. Jamie, where the heck are we? We are actually uh, in a representation of a Florida spring. Florida has more springs than any other state in the continental US, and this is where all of our water comes from. That's pretty clear water, right? Yeah, it's all fresh water, comes up through the ground at about 72 degrees year round, and about eight billion gallons a day comes up from the ground to come out into our streams and our rivers, and uh, that's where all of our water starts. Eight billion gallons. Now, if you line each of those gallons up, it would be a lot of gallons. I mean, trust me on this one. Now, what do we have here? What do we? What kind of fish? Oh, well, we have a variety of different fish. We have some sunfish. We have some largemouth bass. We have some chain pickerel. We have uh, what's called a bowfin, which is actually almost a prehistoric fish. It goes back to prehistoric times. Wow. And we actually have some turtles in here as well. And uh, this is common to a lot of our fresh waters and our streams, our rivers, and our springs throughout the state. Did you know that some fish, like grouper, start off as girls and end up as boys? It's true. Jamie, I notice here we got all kinds of animals showing us uh, the types of fish that be swimming around in a uh, Florida River. We got bass and shiners, and I even saw some otters going crazy in there. What's that all about? Uh, well, otters are great animals, and a lot of people aren't even familiar that they live in Florida, but we've got a lot of them here, and uh, they're real playful, real active animals, um, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have a few of them here. Uh, they're active only about four hours a day, so we have several otters that we bring out at different times of the day and uh, they come out here and they're real playful but just real neat animals and we hope that people will realize that by protecting our rivers they're also protecting the otters as well yeah they're having a great time people are gathering around they're kind of like wrestling with each other cool it's lunchtime with the otters here on david dtv come on guys let's eat did you know that most sharks have to keep swimming just to keep from sinking it's true excuse me i i was scuba diving earlier in the show i had a suit just like that only I had flippers, you don't even have flippers. Jamie, here at the Florida Aquarium, we have all sorts of backgrounds and different reefs. This has got to be coral, this is fascinating. Coral itself is actually living, isn't it? Coral is an animal, right. And uh, coral um, actually can only be found in the continental US. Florida is the only state uh, where we have a living reef on our shores. Coral is something if you're ever snorkeling or lucky enough to scuba dive around, you don't want to be stepping on it or swimming and touching it a lot because it is actually an animal. Exactly. You don't want to touch it or step on it at all. A majority of the damage that's done to our coral reefs is actually done by recreational divers. Uh, you can actually kill it and what takes thousands and thousands of years to build up can uh, stop growing in an instant just because somebody was a little bit careless. Plus it's like someone coming into your home and stepping all over your coffee table. This is where the animals hang out. Did you know it's the male seahorse that gives birth, not the female? And between three and 800 little seahorses pop out? It's true. Here we've got some young alligators which are very common out in our marshes. And uh, we actually uh, have about a dozen babies here. They're pretty young. They're pretty active. They're moving around. They're kind of hanging out with each other. When these guys get big and they want to make the break over the big wall, what are you going to do with them? Uh, we're going to make sure that they get out uh, back into the wild. Uh, they're part of a hatch and release program with the state. We're taking care of them while they're young, uh, but we want to make sure that they're uh, healthy and uh, make a living for themselves when they get out of here. Good deal. What kind of stuff do these guys eat? Do you know? Uh, they eat all kinds of stuff. They eat a combination of shrimp. Uh, sometimes we feed them some chicken and some other uh, meat. We also uh, give them some vegetable and uh, vitamin supplements as well. Gators eat better than I do. Hey, look at this guy. He's got a mouthful of something over there chowing down. All right, we'll see you guys in a couple of years when it's release time.
Did you know that the shark's favorite food is a peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich? It's not true! This has been David DTV taking you inside the Florida Aquarium. And cut. Cool. I tell you, Smedley, fish are so cool looking, man. There's so many in here. I could watch them for hours. Yeah, me too. That's why I decided to get my very own fish bowl. Really? What you got in there? Oh, I went to the store and got one of those stick fish. Stick fish? If Smedley doesn't break anything, we'll be back with more after this. And now, back to more David DTV. Hey, Smedley, you think that sounded like me? Whew. Another great show. Done. Good job, Smedley. But I got to tell you, man, all this hard work is really making me hungry. Yeah, me too. So what's for lunch? What's for lunch? Oh, of course. Fish sticks. <gasps> Fish sticks?